right. Hello, everyone. Um, we have another guest this week. It's Steven. it's me. Yeah, no. it's, it's yeah, not sorry. it's not Brennan times two, <laughs> or times three, I guess. Uh, yes. This is our friend More Steven. Nothing. He's here to. He's our resident Pokemon expert. That's what we're gonna. Call I don't him. know if I would call myself that. <laughs> I have an ex Pokemon Go expert, but there we go. Okay. Um, that was a long time ago. Now, now that I think about it. What what's up, last, guys? What was the last game you played? Like that was not that was like on a console or something. The last Pokemon game I played. Yeah. Was probably. I know it was Sun and Moon. I played. Oh, okay. I think I had. Mm, actually, I don't remember. I think I had Sun actually, but I'm not entirely sure. I usually get the first one of the two games. Like I got Diamond X. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually got White instead of Black, but you know, I think Sun and Moon was my last one. So I didn't. I never didn't play like the Ruby and Sapphire remakes. Okay. Or mm-hmm. thing like that, because also my 3DS has been like lost for years. But you know, I was. That happens. I was one of the people who got a 2DS because I couldn't afford a 3DS, <laughs> <laughs> and it was a used 2DS, no less. So now, was the 2DS 2DS XL that like folds still, or was it, like just like the flat like it's brick? A flat one. It's flat. It's oh. terrible to play on. It's <laughs> awful. Um, but so Steve is going to be here to talk about the new Pokemon game that's coming out. We'll get to that pretty soon. But just wanted to go through the qu- quick bit of news we have. Um, so starting with Blade, the Marvel film will start filming in late 2021. We have no other news about Blade, other than that, it's going to start filming. Um, <clears throat> more photos have been released from the Thor Love and Thunder set. I don't know if you guys saw that. Um, I have not. Mm, we I got pictures that, yeah. of fake Thor, fake Loki, and fake Hela, played by Luke Hemsworth, Matt Damon, and Melissa McCarthy. I so believe they were... Back. Yes, they are coming back. I don't know why, but they're coming I back. Am, I am excited. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I guess they survived, like... Ragnarok some somehow. <laughs> I guess uh, were they in like an end credit scene? I don't remember them. I don't remember them being in it. Oh, you don't you don't remember them at all? No, they were in Ragnarok. It was when Thor first came back to Asgard and like Odin oh, was there, okay, but it was yeah, Loki yeah. as Odin having this whole show That's right, about I that. Thor the Dark World to kind of mock uh, Thor yeah. the Dark World. <laughs> I just <laughs> saw I was I saw Endgame on TV the other like last sometime last week or whatever, and then Thor, uh, Ragnarok started playing in the background there. I got like right to that scene where it was like the fake play or whatever, and and Thor was like, "Yeah, no, I I ain't messing with this," and just reveals that it's Loki immediately. <laughs> it's like, "Yep, that's Thor." Uh, the next bit of news is that the, there's a there's a, a purportedly rumored, I guess, uh, project at at uh, Marvel, according to Illuminati, that the mutants. It's called the mutants is in the works um, instead of the X-Men, I guess, to separate themselves from that. Um, and then we'll, we'll get to the next piece of news about someone getting called out for that. I don't know if how true that is. I don't know why they'd be working on that now, but who knows? Marvel's doing a whole lot. Marvel's doing far too much in some people's <laughs> opinions. I have lost track of their upcoming projects. because I think it's like, you know, over like 20 or 30 now. Yeah, uh, it's a lot. They're really though. trying. I feel like they're trying to like really expand what they're going with here because, like, no, I don't think anything they're ever going to reach the same hype as Endgame and Infinity War were like ever again. Like, even it, it, even if like they manage to get everyone back or like whoever is still left at that point, um, it won't reach like that. So they got to like start. They're trying to be more creative and like see like because the whole thing was like the multiverse and everything like that's going on like that. They're really trying to just like expand out to as much as we can just for like kind of get some new things going on when when like they know like you know we reached a peak or a peak, i guess they like being uh it, it, sh- it should be the peak because like, like endgame was just crazy with the amount of hype that's around about it but they're trying to say like how can we get some more retention that's going on and like with all these new ideas and stuff. So I think that's kind of like where that's how how I feel that they're trying to go for with everything just to keep everyone kind of like interested. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely ag- agree with uh, Infinity War and, and Endgame. It is it, like it's that was like the most like unprecedented like you, like in in like all of comic book m- movie history and like movie history in general bringing that many characters from their own films all into one thing where all their storylines are, are relatively balanced. That is going to be 
hard, hard to top, but we can't forget that they are coming out with the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special <laughs> soon. <laughs> uh, and, and I personally think it's going to blow everything out of the water completely. It, it might, man. They got some real hardcore Gar- Guardians of the Galaxy fans out there. Oh, yeah. Let's um, see. I don't know, but you got that Schneider cut. I think that might uh, that might help end game. Jeez, uh, that's that's coming up in the news here. Uh, but Schneider anyway, cut of end game. Speaking, let's just go with yes, that. Six hours there we go. long. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Illuminati also reported. Speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, that um, they they reported that Adam Warlock was casted as, or that they were looking for a Zac Efron type. And then that, and then James Gunn, the director of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, came out and said, uh, "No, actually, that's not true at all." Um, so I no longer, tr- I don't know whether or not to trust the Luminarity or not. Um, I would not trust anyone who's posting things on on like, the internet <laughs> at fair, all. Fair. That in- that includes us, by the way. Anyone who's like who's listening, don't trust us either. No, it's definitely not. We, we do like to speculate, though. And we're going to speculate yes. later on in the show about when yes. uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. But, Our um, number just... one rule is to not speculate, and we break that every single episode <laughs> here. Just just routinely. Exactly. I mean, how can, how can you not speculate with Marvel? I mean, that, <laughs> oh. that, like, that's literally what all of WandaVision was, was every oh episode God, just was. a cliffhanger and so that people could just be talking about for the entire next week. <laughs> I saw uh, I saw Falcon the Winter Soldier like logo edit, and I said Mephisto and the Winter Mephisto. <laughs> I saw that too. <laughs> and that's just the people they they went out of their minds with that. I mean, I did that a little bit too early on, but after episode eight or, or was it seven, I was just like, I'm not I'm not gonna speculate anymore because I'm just gonna not expect anything and be happy with it, which I was. Yeah. But um, uh, so now to Star Wars news, which is not much. Uh, Indira Varma. Uh, from Game of Thrones is set was set to join the cast of Obi Wan Kenobi, um, which I believe starts filming this month, if I remember correctly. Um, and then Harrison Duel is rumored to be in the Rangers of the Republic show, which is cool. Um, they're saying that she's replacing Cara Dune, but I don't think Cara Dune was ever supposed to be in it. Whatever. Wow. It, it's all it's that that nonsense that uh, happened with that. Um, Aquaman 2 is set to begin filming in June on the DC News in the UK, uh, and its working title is Necris, which apparently means something. Um, but that's, should, again, speculation. I should probably watch Aquaman 1 at some point. Me too. Uh, <laughs> Not seen it. I've, I, yeah. I've, I've seen all the pre- uh, Justice League movies, but I've not seen anything otherwise. I haven't seen Justice League or anything after that. I have uh, heard Aquaman... Back. I yeah I have heard Aquaman was not terrible, but that's the extent of the discussion I've seen about it. So it's a low bar in the DCEU. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, then there's an investors meeting where AT and T revealed that Batgirl and Zatanna will be entering the DCEU via HBO Max shows. Um, I'm excited for the uh, Z- Zatanna one because mm-hmm. I like Constantine, and I think they've had. Crossover right, with, that. yeah, with like with Constantine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want Matt Ryan's Constantine back, but we're probably <laughs> never, ever going to get that done well ever again. So no, probably not. Yeah. Uh, and now we're back. Now we're to the Pokemon news. Um, as we said last oh, week, before but, that, before that, before one that. piece of DC news you missed oh. was um, the Snyder, uh, uh, the Snyder cut. We knew that there was one of um, Justice League. But apparently, there was, there was one of Tom and Jerry as well for a couple minutes uh, this past week. Maybe this isn't anything you saw, what? but for like half an hour, something got m- messed up where if you went to watch Tom and Jerry, it would start playing the Snyder Cut of <laughs> Justice League <laughs> instead. How do you mess that up? I They're no vastly idea. different movies. I have no idea what button got pushed to switch the Tom and Jerry file with the <laughs> Justice League file, but apparently someone pressed that button and for like half an hour or like 20 minutes or whatever, you could like watch it. But like after like 20 minutes later, it like, like it just, it just cut the movie off and it pulled up Tom and Jerry. But uh, some people were very surprised <laughs> That's funny. About how the live action Tom and Jerry movie uh, started. <laughs> this isn't Tom and Jerry. 
<laughs> when did when did they enter the DCEU? Uh, I heard that movie was awful. Um, granted, it doesn't look very good. Tom and Jerry movie? Yeah. Y'all haven't seen I've, that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, I've seen a lot of people like complaining about that, but for the people I've seen complaining about that, they're all just like, oh, it's just like a kid's movie. And it's like, yeah, it's yeah, Tom yes. and Jerry. Like, <laughs> what are you expecting? Um, yeah, like, I've heard of Tom and Jerry like as a kid's movie. Like, the new one is a good kid's movie, but like, don't go into it expecting more than that. And like, you know, if, if you want to watch it, you'll be fine. What are they expecting? It's Tom and Jerry. Yeah, I, it's slapstick I, I comedy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're probably expecting the same thing out of the Lego movie. Oh, <laughs> Lego. Or what about Lego Ninjago? Mm. We, we <laughs> will never speak of that <laughs> again. It's on HBO Max. Oh no! If you want to kill Tam again? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We've already killed Tam. We just, we just need to kill Matt now, and we'll be absolutely <laughs> fine. He listens to this. You <laughs> really? <laughs> you just. <laughs> hey Matt, if you're listening, just disregard uh, what we're planning here. Um, and if you receive a link to a video on HBO Max, just watch it without questioning it. The entire hour and a half. About, about, about how long is the runtime of the Lego Ninjago movie here? However long that is, it's not Lego Ninjago movie. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> I like how you wink, and then, because he doesn't, he listens to it. Uh, but I just gave it away. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, Wally. <laughs> um, Let me see. It is one hour and forty-one minutes. Okay. Uh, it'll be a one hour and forty-one. A uh, one hour and forty-one minute uh, video, Matt. But uh, a long movie. Don't no. Yeah. <laughs> For like, it's not what you're movie. expecting. Wink. Oh, I said that out loud that time. Oh, and speaking of good movies, I saw Ryan the Last Dragon on Friday in the theater for the first time in like over oh, a year. Oh, wow. I know. It was good. It was a good movie. Nice. Definitely nice. recommend it when it's free <laughs> on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, what will do. I'm going to have to figure out if like I'm going to venture back into the theater at all when like Black Widow comes out in, in May. Right now, like I'm, I'm thinking probably not. So I may end up breaking my streak of seeing each of the Marvel films on, on like uh-huh. you know, opening night. But I mean, see that, I mean, there was May a, rolls around. There was a giant space cow with Mark Hamill in the corner of the movie theater. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, we're not quite out of the pandemic yet. Um, we'll see. Yeah. So now to Pokemon. Pokemon news. Finally, after years and years of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl fans begging for remakes, they got it, and it almost seems like an exact remake. Lots of people complained about it. Uh, it's coming out at the end of 2021. It's Brilliant oh. Diamond and Shining Pearl, um, as well as a Pokemon Legends game that takes place in ancient Sinnoh called Pokemon Legends Arceus. Um I, th- I think all three of us grew up on this one, like just like our at least like second Pokemon game. I don't know. It was my yeah. first. I the very first Pokemon game I ever played was uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeons: Explorers of like of Darkness. Because mm-hmm. I had a friend who like this was in, in, in middle school on like the bus back and forth, he'd be playing it, and I'm like, "What's that?" We're like Pokemon. <laughs> What's Pokemon? <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I got like an actual, like one of the main series games. Like, I think I got like, like, like Heart Gold was the first one I had. And I was like, this is different than Mystery <laughs> Dungeons, but they were all, all fun to play. Mm-hmm. I love the stupid little characters that, I, uh, <laughs> that were in all the games. I was like, these are Pokemon. This is super awesome. Um, so I had a lot of fun playing those. Then when Pokemon Go came out, I had already played in like, Heart Gold and X and Platinum. And I was like, Pokemon Go. And then I've been playing that for like five years. And <laughs> it has been five years. It gave it off for five years. It's crazy. Yeah, it is Oof. so obnoxious now. I'm so tired of it almost. I'm like burnt out of playing. Same. But Just yeah. now? That's what happened After to me. six years? <laughs> I've invested far too much time in it now. I'm like, I'm, I, like I'm, I, I must hold on. I remember um, when you guys... the servers crash. I remember when you guys would leave my house... And you're like, well, see, we're gonna go play Pokemon Kill. Yep. <laughs> and then, cause you guys did that, and then like me, Matt, and Colton went bowling. But then we got <laughs> to the bowling alley. We're like, you know what? Let's go to the beach instead. That was hmm, that was that night, huh? Yep. Yeah. I 
I remember there's one time Steve and I left your house and there was like a Snorlax that like spawned like right, like, you know, where like, where it goes like the yep. golf course, it was like right there. And I was like, Steven I remember that. Stop the car. We're, there's a Snorlax we, like, right here. <laughs> I feel like there was one night that we were like on, on his, we like borrowed his scooters or bikes or something yeah. to go, to go chase something down there. Dratini. I don't know. <laughs> Matt's it's obsession with Dratini. Dratini. <laughs> no, yes. but, but yeah, no, um, Diamond was the first game like I actually like went through and completed. Oh, wow. Now we've had I had the other games there. Like I know I had Red and Blue on the Game Boy. There's mm-hmm. but that was my brother that played that. Um, and then I played um, Ruby as well okay. on on the Game Boy there. But like I I didn't know enough to like. I was still too young to like actually be able to solve like the little riddles or clues and passageways that you had that you had to like trek through for each very especially like the caves and stuff. Uh, I was, I had no idea what I was doing there, but like, but that, when Diamond came out, I still remember Diamond. Us playing, me and Wally playing in third grade. Oh yeah. <laughs> after school and during school, sometimes too. I remember when we were able to bring those in. Mm-hmm. Um, with everything just to just like completing the game to to uh the underground area there and then like just bat- battling over so much me you and connor man yeah yep. <laughs> and isaac i think yep. to an extent too <laughs> um yeah i remember i was home from school sick once and i mean i this would this is long after i'd beaten the game already um i had diamond ryan had pearl um which was cool about that because like we'd always get both games because um, we, there's two of us. Um, and I was sick from school and I remember because I had an action replay, which was, do you, you guys remember those? Yeah. Oh. I had an action yeah. replay yeah. and <laughs> I beat the entire game in that sick day with an Infernape and a Pachirisu. <laughs> and I, the Pachirisu was my name made, not the Infernape. I somehow managed to go through the ground uh, Elite Four member with the Pachiris. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, it was unfair because, I mean, I, I could have done, like, a tackle and then they, they could have lost their, all their HP with the action replay. But Yeah, like, just the existence of action replays, like, spoiled me so much. I, 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 I never had one myself, but I had a friend who had one who, like, played the game a lot. And, like, so we would trade Pokemon pretty oft, mm-hmm. often. And, like, with the action replay, he would just get, like, an unlimited amount of like master balls yep. every time we trade he would just give his pokemon a master ball to hold tra- trade it to me i would get a free like master ball every time <laughs> i traded him and so like we so, so like so like so like that was like in, in middle school or whatever when i went to revisit the game i recently like sold the save file so i opened it up i was going through my pokemon i had like a giraffe rig caught in a master ball i had like a i had like a, a pidgeot caught in a master ball i had like you know like just all this super common stuff i was like i was i was like i never had to try i was i was so spoiled like playing the decks there like oh, this is a rare thing like master ball deck century done and it was it, it was it was it was so nice it was so nice no the action replay man that was something i'll tell you though my 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 favorite thing about diamond is that like it was one of the most broken games for legendaries oh, yeah. out of all of all the Pokemon, and I don't know, like what I, I can't really remember much about X and Y, and then Sun and Moon. I'm sure they have a lot in them too. But it's like when you have like all the old games, the original games before Heart and Heart Gold and Soul Silver came out too, and stuff. But like, and then Diamond c- came out, and um, it was just completely broken after you got the national decks. You can get, you could get, especially if you had an action replay too. Like you, you I remember. Like, trips to uh dark dark Rai. i remember um giratina uh, giratina probably is how, how to pronounce that um curin it was what well, that might have been on uh white i'm not entirely sure yeah but, yeah Hiram's in red. Was, heatran is on heatran yeah heatran yeah. i remember heatran too I love heatran. yeah oh fire no, I, type. it's a weird weird type of- yeah exactly and uh chrysalia too i remember was like uh, and then there's like all the originals obviously too mm-hmm. like the um lake trio and obviously the, um dialga and palkia and stuff but man after you got the national decks in that game you were just they would just open a whole nother world because mm-hmm. 
um there, there's there, it just like unlocked something hidden behind all the main game stuff mm-hmm. that that you, you just get all those legendaries after so what, I, that was what like really kept me in diamond i remember what with the action replay i would just like i would get to i don't remember which port town it was and i would just run to the left and just keep running with the action replay and running on the water just keep running and running and eventually you get to dark rise island <laughs> yeah <laughs> get on there mm-hmm. you throw a pokeball and you go i was back. That, oh, I remember man. that, and I remember looking up on like all those message boards in the forums and stuff mm-hmm. on like how to get all these Pokemon <laughs> and stuff, and like some of them you needed an actual replay, others you didn't. I remember there was one where like for, one for Darkrai. There was a few different ones for Darkrai, I know, but like you could just oh, really? go to like a Pokemon Center in like Hearthrome City or something. And then you could just like use the action replay to get out of the wall and stuff, and you would just keep walking to the left, like you said, and you'd eventually run into Darkrai. And there he is. I'm just like, <laughs> what is this? It's so random. And it actually worked. I could see. I saw it. I think I tried it one time at at some point with it. Um, I was using someone's action replay, but it's just crazy all the stuff you can do with that. I used to walk into cave walls and walk around them so I didn't have to deal with Zubat and the, the trainers in there. I just would go into the cave wall and just like, walk through. Oh, man, yeah. Actually, we played the best. Um, and then there was... I remember I went to an event at Toys R Us for Shaman. Did you guys ever get mm-hmm. Shaman? Was Shaman... It was a little, like, little porcupine grass-type legendary. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was like a hedgehog thing. I had oh, one. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't go to... An event, so I don't know. I don't remember how I got him. Trade or action uh, replay. I, I yeah, like I yeah, like I wish I had an action replay. It sounds like <laughs> I could have been able to do a like actually cool stuff. Um, <laughs> My inferno yeah. was level fifty four before I got to the first gym with the action replay. <laughs> like no. I just sat there and just killed all the starlies. Nice. It's a uh, Cantalave City, by the way, was the okay. port city in gotcha. the, in Sino. I just lo- I just looked that up because it was mm-hmm. killing me there. No, um, what was it? I I remember there was one of them for Rotom. They, no, he's not yeah, like a legendary yeah. or anything. He he just like could like change forms or whatever. Mm-hmm. I know, but like one of the tricks there was like it had to be at the, a certain time in the night, and you'd go to that like abandoned mansion. I remember yeah, in the or woods. whatever, and like you talk to the TV. Mm-hmm. Or, or something or you like try to like interact with it and then shaman would or not shaman the rotom would just appear mm-hmm. on there and i was i was like i was all i was also I remember i was like low-key kind of scared to do that like because but then i remember like you could just change the setting to the um nighttime in ds or whatever for that mm-hmm. but just something i think rotom started as a legendary i'm not sure but after a while he stopped being one at least that's how i perceived it Cause I didn't realize. Cause I think now you get a Rotom deck, a Rotom Dex in the new game. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. I, I don't know why they made that change. He used to be like. I, I don't think he was ever legendary. I think, like you know, it kind of seems like he was like a mythical at oh, one yeah. point. Yeah. But it's just it's it's kind of obnoxious to just for like to have him as like a Dex. It's like he's a Pokemon still. Yeah. Have him be a Pokemon, <laughs> not a Pokedex. But maybe that's just me, like a. Uh, I don't know if the, what the term is. Someone who likes how things were and doesn't like how things are. Right. <laughs> um, with Pokemon. No. I am nowhere close to like a Pokemon uh, expert or professional here. I've only started playing in like in like in in middle school or whatever. I like know uh, you both were playing since since elementary school. You, you are the pros here. I'm just a, <laughs> a like a novice who. Uh, like like I played through Heart Gold X and Omega a Ruby. Omega Ruby was like was my game. Actually, Heart Gold was also my game. Mm-hmm. X was all right. X was decent. Mm-hmm. I didn't like X all yeah. that much. Like understandable. <laughs> Omega Ruby was insane with like because like it gave you every oh, uh, legendary that, that that like that had come like before. Yeah, uh, you could just get like all of them. Which was cool. Uh, That's what I assume. It definitely with those like with the later games and the newer games that are coming now, it's like they always got to keep going bigger, so they have to like include as much as they can with that. Um, It'll be interesting to but, see what the yeah. new Diamond and, and Pearl games have. Like if they have have all of them, or they just have like a select selection. They better <laughs> at least have the ones that they had before, man. <laughs> if, if if they're saying it's like a carbon copy of the original, I mean. 
I'm okay with that. I will always be okay with that. As uh, if it is, I hope they do have. A, if they do make it like the exact same, which I'm okay with. I don't. I don't really care. I would have to get a switch, but I'm gonna get it. <laughs> um, I hope they have like a way to get to the Dark Rye Island instead of you having to cheat to get there. And the same thing with Shaman. Maybe maybe they do an event or something. I don't know. Um, well, I wonder if like something like that is. I mean, it's obviously in the game, I guess, for the de- for the developers. But I don't know if they would ever come out and actually like talk about Dark Rye Island or something like that right. um, themselves about it. So I, it's it, it it'll be interesting. I don't know if they'll like they might include it as like an Easter egg kind of thing, maybe. Because I'll do about it, but I'm pretty sure for the original Diamond and Pearl games, like for like the for the for like the Dark Rye Island or whatever it was, it's like. It was it was in the game, and how you're supposed to get there is like it was like a, an event, like at a, like a Toys R Us or GameStop, or whatever, where you would get a pass that would like let yeah. you hop on a boat to go there. So it'll probably be something like that if it's included, like 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 on 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 the Switch with what they've been Are doing with me? Sword and Shield. Um, I it, like I know that Sword and Shield have had those things where you'll you will purchase an additional pass or whatever mm-hmm. to be able to access more Pokemon. They're like having like this paywall up. I'm hoping that like they don't do it for Diamond and Pearl like remakes where they have something where like, oh, you want Darker Eye? Pay like $5 in, in like the eShop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's just how all games are nowadays. You get, you get what you get in the base game, but like those extra kind of stuff you usually have to pay for about it. Yeah. But like, it's kind of, it was it was like it was in a sense the same way back then because I remember there was an event like when Diamond was and Pearl had first come out about it where you could get like a pokey flute and yes. that's how you would get Arceus. But after a certain amount of time that that was out, that was gone. But like I that was gone before I like started legendary hunting and everything. So like when I went up on the, all these like forums to see how you could get them. There, there was like, you need the pokey flute to get RCS or else you need an action replay. I'm just like, well, all right then. <laughs> Sad. I guess oh, that's man. not happening. But like, yeah, RCS was crazy too because you went to the uh, spear pillar where Dialga was or whatever when you where you caught Dialga, and you could and apparently you just like walk right past them and with the action. And then go, they like ascend into the heavens or whatever, and then get RCS, and then you find RCS there. Oh, wow. It was crazy. Uh, no, I'm excited to see what they're going to do with this remake. Uh, hey, okay. So let's see if I can. Ow. <laughs> Did you just say that? That was a uh, weird robotic sound. Okay, so now we're recording. Nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said, now we're recording. Hold on. <laughs> Are you back? <laughs> Sorry. Craig said, there's only room for one of us here. <laughs> okay. So I clicked to close. Um, I clicked to close it, and I accidentally closed out the, the, the tab that had Discord in it. So anyway, so... If you guys notice, if this is even noticeable on in the recording, uh, this is a little different um, because Zoom kicked us out. Oh, we're talking to our and audience now. Yes, yes, no, we're not, <laughs> not just talking to each. I was about to say, I don't know all of this. Wally, I'm, I'm, well, I'm here. here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just providing a recap to, to us. <laughs> to the, to the, yes, I'm telling you guys what happened. Just, just to us two. And then I left <laughs> so accidentally. But anyway. It's, it's, it's pretty funny because for our audience, it's, it's going to be like an instantaneous thing. And it's, it's going to be us talking and, all, and then all of a sudden you're like, I bet you're wondering why things have changed. <laughs> they're like, what is he talking about? Well, I mean, it looks slightly Just different. like a random I mean, cut. Um, well, for one, Steven's not showing up on my screen. So hopefully that doesn't do anything. Um, well, it's right. game time. I, mean, I don't know. I can I see Steven. I can't explain it. I, that's I'm fine. Hopefully. <laughs> no, like there's no picture. Here. Oh. Well, I'll, he's gone. He'll be back in a moment. With, nope, is he there? Oh, there he is. And he's still. 
So as you can see, everyone, we're bringing a very <laughs> solid level of professionalism <laughs> to this podcast. Good thing people only listen screen, to this. Wally? Uh, you're the, Wally, it's are fine. you? It's fine. Are this doesn't have to go on YouTube. Oh, not? No. Wait. It, <laughs> this doesn't have to go on YouTube. We were talking about coming off of YouTube anyway. <laughs> It'll just go on the on the podcast. No matter. People listen to this and like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just um, put like the first half on YouTube and then like the second <laughs> half. But we'll just be like, go to Spotify <laughs> for part two. Jeez. Anyway, uh, so we're talking we about Pokemon. To, yeah, we need to we need to figure out if anyone's actually gonna if we're gonna like put this part up for people to hear, or if we're just gonna like cut all this out. No, if, I'll, like, no I'll, one's gonna I'll do this. what I did yeah. the first time. Remember the first time we didn't put a video with it? I'll yeah, just put yeah. the audio up on YouTube. Yeah. But like this piece of dialogue specifically, like, will this be included or is this gonna get like chopped off? Yes. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perfect. Anyway, oh, I'm going to to videos. Video. Yeah, I'm going to pretend that it is going to get chopped off here and say, uh, just pretend we didn't okay. we, like it's just continuous here. And then everyone will be like, uh, but we can hear you saying it's not. Like, we know that it's different, but I'm going to ignore all of them. Uh, okay, cool. So, anyway. So, what do we think about the new Pokemon games, guys? Just all in all, uh, the new okay. remakes, good or bad? Oh, I, I am excited for these remakes. I don't have a Switch, so I don't know <laughs> how I'm going to play them. Maybe I'll just borrow some ones at some point. But, I'm um, just going to buy one. Definitely... Well, the, well I'm definitely like looking, gonna try and find a way to get to get my hands on one of those, and I'm excited for the uh, Legends RC skiing too. It's got, it's oh, got yeah. some Breath of the Wild vibes going on, for sure. That as well. What, what do you think of the? Because a lot of people were complaining about the animation for the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. They went back to the old one, but also in but kind of 3D. Um, I don't care personally. Um, I, I don't I'm care. just I'm just glad we're getting the. <laughs> Okay, I am an, I'm an old fashioned type of dude when it comes to video games and stuff. Like, if I played something when I was a kid, I want that, but just again and do <laughs> so it can feel like new. Yes. And that, that doesn't <laughs> sense logically, but it's just like nostalgia. Sure. You know, sure. That, I want, that's a thing. I want that same product at the current inflated prices. <laughs> Yeah, I know, like, back I then it was that, like, what? But I want bucks? to pay more. <laughs> yeah. then, it's like twice the price now. Yeah. Um, yeah um, and then the RCS game was interesting because the starters are not the traditional Sinnoh starters. Yeah, they I was going to say, what do you guys Rowlett, think about that? Rowlett, yeah. and Cyndaquil. Who, um, who would you guys choose? I already know exactly who I would choose. Who would you guys we, choose? Bre- uh, well, Steven? I do know that Rowlett... I, if I remember correctly, Rowlett is a pretty popular uh, choice, especially like like just by grass types in general. Like I know grass types mm-hmm. kind of get the uh, the budget of the joke sometimes and stuff when it comes to starters. But I think Rowlett was pretty popular, if I remember correctly, um, when he came out. Um, mm-hmm. But me, I'm personally, I am always a, uh, most of the time. I'm all I, I always gravitate towards the fire types. And Cyndaquil, like, he's a classic. It's not like the best fire to fire starter, or any by that means or anything. But I think he'd be, it'd be my choice at, at first, at just at first glance. But I'll, I'd have to think about it more. Um, I'll be honest, uh, Brennan, uh, I don't like any of the Gen Two starters uh, at all. Actually, I think they're all really dumb. I don't, especially the Grass type. And as Steven said, they're usually the brunt of the joke. But Mega is Mega Neum. I think that's what it, I hate. I hate that Pokemon yeah, so much. Medium, it's a, yeah, yeah, I, it's dumb. Yeah, I, I don't it's like them. Uh, the Cyndaquil is the best of the three, uh, but I'm not gonna go with Cyndaquil <laughs> here. And I'm, I would probably pick Rowlet because I like Decidueye, which is what it turns into. Um, so that's probably my pick. What's your pick, Brennan? Uh, well, uh, Steven, you were wrong. Wally, you were correct. Rowlet is the only <laughs> uh, option. Yeah, Rowlet is. The I best. do remember. I, <laughs> I remember people really liked Rowlet, and like just because he has the little suit, the little tie or whatever yes, that, that, I, he, that he comes with, and then like Decidueye is like a grass and ghost, right? 
Mm-hmm. Like that, I know. Like that's that's a really actually cool type. Like just thinking about it, like good combo and everything. So it's it's not surprising. But like I have I have no personal tie to Rowlet or anything like that. So that's just from my choice. I'm always yeah. going to be one of the classic pickers. And like honestly, all of them are very <laughs> solid options. But I just absolutely <laughs> love Rowlet. He's one of my favorites. So I was very glad to see him included, especially when the other two are ones that like are very cool. But I'm not fond of them per- particularly so yeah and like Oshawa, for me i like asha i like asha he's a cool he's a cool pokemon just not not the best of the three obviously as we've seen as we've said here it's all right definitely i think i think like by the time he was released though and everything i was just like i was out of that initial like nostal- uh classic pokemon era so it's just like mm. he's he, he's cool and everything, but it's just like it's not going to beat uh, the gen gens one through four for me. It's just not going to. And then I have an unpopular opinion with uh, with them, but it's always going to be uh, a classic for me. When I when you pair one classic with two of the right. uh, new newerish ones, um, I'll always take Cyndaquil there. Is Oshawa the best of the Gen five? I like Snipe. It's got Embor and it has yeah. Blunt, uh, what's the superior? Superior? I think so. Superior. Yeah. You know? um, uh, I, I, Embor is terrible. I picked him. Everyone hates. It. I don't. Well, I actually really like a uh, Tepig. Embor is Embor is cool. Like he's the, he's not he's no Infernape or anything, obviously. But right. um, uh, the one time go, the- maybe two times I played white. Well, no, I think actually I might have only played through white one, once, and I did pick Embor just because, like I said before, fire. I've always gravitated towards fire, but um, I did like Embor. I don't, I, I don't really get all the hate that he gets, but I'm not sure how he's, I'm not sure how he is stat wise, but I very much like his shiny form. I think he's one of the coolest shiny forms of like of. Of the starters, I don't know how Tepic looks as a shiny, but like Embor, oh yeah, that is like blue. unmatched. Mm-hmm. Yes, I remember that blue now. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of hate for Gen Five when it came out. And people who grew up, <laughs> yeah, grew up with it had to defend it. It's almost like the the, the prequels. People who grew up with it had to like defend it hardcore. Oh man, and like yeah, Gen Five is the prequels. There we go. Yes. Um, I also think because, that because there are a lot of just terrible Pokemon in there, like Garboder. Um, yeah, but now, the, but when you take a step back and look at it, if you re- like, some of the early ones also were kind of bad. Like, there's literally a ball of electricity. That's a Pokeball. Yeah, and honestly, there were a lot of there were a lot of Gen Five designs I liked a whole lot, mm-hmm. and they're like currently releasing Gen Five in Pokemon Go still after having mm-hmm. introduced like like Gen Six. They're doing them all out of order now. I don't know why. It's kind of bothering me a lot because it's like just it's it's it, this isn't hard they they give you a numbered list <laughs> do it in order <laughs> um but yeah and there's some that i'm very ex- excited just to, like to see them released to see it like like in the game there's a lot that gen 5 did have to offer i think that when they released the main series games doing uh black and white and then doing like sequel remake games to them called Black 2 and White 2. I think it's one of the, just like the stupidest things I've, that I've ever heard of in a Pokemon game. Like they couldn't have added like yeah. Like like Midnight Black and like I don't Noon White. Afternoon I don't know. White. Just, yeah. Noon White. <laughs> <laughs> um, um but yeah, like they're not necessarily bad games and I wonder in in my opinion the if uh, um, the the RC game is gonna have like just the Sinnoh Pokemon, or if it's gonna have everything, like they have the national decks. I mean, you're building the decks, the na- the Pokedex for the first time, like ever. You're supposed to be building like, the first ever Pokedex, but I wonder if it's gonna have like all the Pokemon, especially with the way your starters are set up. None of them are Sinnoh Pokemon, or if they're just gonna like um be the ones from Sinnoh, because that's what we saw, what? I think, in the in the preview. But I don't remember. I'd be inclined just... to say only Gen Four, but with the the, the, the starters, you know, there I could see it going either way. Yeah, I just feel like with 
like the stories that they give you with that, you got to It's got to be like some sort of hint to where like it's not just going to be Gen Four with that. And I think like with just that open world aspect that they're doing with that game, it, it makes me think that like they have to be planning something pretty big that's going on within like a lot of with just like a lot to do with that because that's coming out separate from the remake, correct? That's yeah, in like twenty twenty two. Early twenty two, yeah. Yeah, because it, it, so it's like a completely separate game and everything. So I feel like they gotta. Be doing something with, big with that. It'll be cool, especially seeing starters out in the wild. I think that's like the first time Pokemon games done that. Because mm-hmm. you'll get to see, I think, in the, in the thing they showed a lot of Piplops out in the wild um, from Turd Twigs. So it'll be interesting to see that whole aspect of this whole new aspect of the game. Because I don't think they've ever come out with a game like this before. Not mm-hmm. like, not like with that much open world or anything that I could see. There I can actually remember. is another open world Pokemon game that was released at some point, and it was the most open world I think that they've ever been. Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Ha! Huh, you almost you, you didn't think I was I was going to go there, huh? But I. <laughs> there. I mean, that's true. Um, <laughs> Technically correct. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, yeah. That is now, as they say, a classic game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or yeah. at least it's it, it's earned its place in in history. I should yep. say. Yeah, I can't believe it's <laughs> can't believe it's been five years since that summer. Yeah. A lot of is... people were comparing last summer or like contrasting last summer with as the opposite of the Pokemon Go summer where no mm-hmm. one was outside. Yep. Oh, oh. Man. So perfectly I think balanced that... as all things should be. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Thanos. Um, <laughs> so, speaking of Thanos, that's a great segue. Um, yep. Wild Division, the last one came out, not last week, but two weeks ago. Um, before we do get to that, Brennan, did you watch the behind-the-scenes Wild Division thing? No, I have not. No, you, I, I suggest you do. You'll enjoy it yes. just from your theater background. Yes, um, you did. Just, and, just gonna... Yeah, and explicitly out of spite, I was like, I'm not... Going to watch it now. I, I, I cannot bow into these outrageous demands here. Um, now it is something that I, that I would like to watch at some point. It seemed interesting from from like the little like trailer thing that they released that I saw. Yeah. Actually, I thought there was a more interesting trailer than the actual trailers for a One Division. So uh, <laughs> we will see how that goes. Um, but yeah, uh, when I do watch it, I'll probably uh talk about it some but i don't know if there's anything else you want to add specifically about that now i mean if specific any specific no, insight I just wanted or to... like, like that no, <laughs> no i'm good um so steven right. let's uh let's get your initial reaction to episode nine of wandavision like what 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 were you expecting going into it and were you satisfied with the end because i know a lot of people weren't because of Miss Vista or the lack thereof yeah i mean I've never claimed to be like the biggest Marvel super fan or anything. Like when the, I didn't really understand like the magnitude of um, the Quicksilver reveal on, and everything on that. Um, uh, well, when it happened and stuff, until like I read on the forums and everything. So like, well, of course, like there we could talk about that all that stuff a little later. As far as like the actual finale of it that went, I I mean I I thought it was a good finale i don't think it was like the best episode of the series or anything it's not my fa- personal favorite um my personal favorite was episode four which i know is a lot of people's Ooh. not personal favorites and stuff Ooh. but um yeah that's a hot take um are you sure brennan went on later. and on about that episode <laughs> yeah yeah in, a, One in of what way of the podcast i did not like episode four at all <laughs> I, well <laughs> i mean <laughs> and and granted, I, I definitely consider myself more of a casual Marvel fan than a super super fan of Marvel, everything like that. But when I did, when I was looking at the first, I, w- I watched the first two episodes. I'm just like, okay, like this is fine. Like I, I I get what they're trying to do. It's a lot of setup and everything. And I was just like, something's got to happen soon and stuff. And then episode four came along, and like just from that very first opening scene with everyone back from the blip and, I, and stuff, I was just like. This is what I've been waiting for. Now it's getting interesting, finally. And I was okay, just kind of like okay. blown away with how how um, it was very well done. Um, 
uh, like at least the opening stuff there like you know as the episode went on it was just like kind of you know about what you expect at that point but it's just but i i think it was more like satisfying than anything else but anyway in regards to the finale um i definitely think that the f- it was a good finale um i think people were expecting a lot more from it from what i could read from what i read and from what i could tell because I, I, it's just like because it's from it's marvel and they're like expecting some huge fight and then they're expecting like every Thing, every speculation to like follow through or like at least one of those theories that fan theories that were going on now just like if they decide not to do it then you know they decide not to do it just kind of it's whatever for me um but it, it had, a, had a good fight scene um pretty, it was pretty predictable and stuff you know um nothing like too shocking or anything like that going on um but i i, I definitely enjoyed it I, I I enjoyed the and I enjoyed the series as a whole, too. Brian, what what do you think of the what do you think of the finale there? Oh yeah, I I I liked the f- finale, and now that the finale has aired, we have the complete series. We have a picture of like you know from beginning to end, what it all looks like, what it all adds up to, what it all like um, like amounts to um and looking over everything that 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 happened from episode one to to to, to episode nine i i do uh enjoy the complete picture that we got and you know in earlier episodes i have said that episodes one two and three were my favorite episodes of the series like just like like by far uncontested i really like the mystery and like all of like the trippy kind of elements looking back at all of it now i think episodes one two and three were the most out of place and one vision as as a series would have like benefited a lot more by not including episodes one two and three in this in the state that we got them i feel like one two and three don't match the tone of the rest of like of the series i think Looking at the final product we got, it would have benefited them more to like include sword at like like at the beginning. Maybe have episode four be like the starting point. Now, don't get me wrong; I would have much rather preferred a one vision series where it was just like episodes one, two, and three throughout the whole series. Uh, but knowing the series that we got, it it, it it may have been better had they not in, in, included one, two, or three. I think one, two, or three, one, two, and three could have stood alone different series more than fit in to the series that like we got so um, but you, all in all i do everything well yeah sorry you do you think uh, no no, no sorry <laughs> so you would have liked it more if episodes one two and three had been more like five six and seven or yeah like yeah incorporated it's, sword and the homage at the same time yes yeah like essentially knowing what it was all you, you building up to what would be happening what would be taking place uh having one two and three in a state that like that, like, they were in set different expectations for the rest of the series that like weren't met that's not a good thing or a bad thing like, necessarily it's just like a just like you know what happened um i would have much rather preferred to see a series of one division that's exactly like one two and three the entire way through but knowing that that's not what they were going for i th- like I like I do think one, two, and three should have been done differently. Very glad that they weren't because I can still watch them as like standalone episodes now and get a lot of enjoyment out of them. They don't necessarily match the whole uh, tone. Right. Um, but going specifically about episode nine, uh, very much liked it. Um, I thought that they would do so. We made a lot of predictions the last episode of this like of this podcast and i found it yes. really funny how almost all of them came true with like within like five minutes of the episode like so uh so like our biggest one was like oh there is going to be a, a like a fight scene between the two visions at some point in in the episode i thought it was gonna be saved for like the climax but no it's like white vision just charges in like immediately and yeah. um it's i I do like how it's how like the the whole 
vision versus vision thing gets resolved. And like, you know, I've seen it posted online a lot, like the most vision way possible where they're just like talking about like philosophies and all that. It was super cool. You know, like Marvel does a whole lot of things where no matter what, how the situation starts, it always gets resolved with super powered beings flying around, shooting each, each other with like with lasers of like of different colors and sizes. Uh, which, you know, that's what happened between Wanda and, and Agnes. And that's what, how the vision fight started. But it was very cool to see it get resolved in a non shooting each other with lasers way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. Uh, I thought the vision fight was cool. And I, like, it, like you said, they, they did that in the most vision way possible. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and the fight. And, uh, I, I I enjoyed the reveal of Wanda becoming the, the Scarlet Witch. Because I know they had said it in the previous episode, oh, you're the Scarlet Witch. And then she becomes the Scarlet Witch at the end, like throughout the episode. It was really, really cool. Yes. Um, I just I thought the episode was great. Um, especially once I let go of having expectations of who should show up when and whatnot. Um, oh, yeah. Unlike some of the internet people. Who did not expectations no. like ruined it i was so glad that, that like that like i wasn't like as into that especially with the thing with like the with like the nuclear scientist or whatever that was there were a lot of speculations about that and a lot of people were very like disappointed like like when you first informed me of this with speculations i was like that didn't even cross my mind when i heard mm-hmm. like the nuclear scientist like mentioned so i'm very glad i didn't have those ex- ex- like expectations i was just fine with it being you know, like the like the woman who was at like the tent that like they went to there or whatever. It ended up being yeah. if that was who it was supposed to be or not. I believe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it it was a very cool cool episode. It was it was very great to see you know more of what the Scarlet Witch means, even though they didn't explicitly say anything else. They were just like, oh, it's in this book. Here's a book that we'll talk about later. Gonna shove that off my plate there. It's now on the like the Doctor Strange director's plate to deal with what the Scarlet Witch actually is. Um, but yeah, that was cool. I I love her new costume so much. It like really represents things well. Even the stupid like headpiece thing looks good. Like it's it's just, yeah, a, it's just I think, a cool costume. I think that costume is very like almost anti hero ish because like <laughs> she. It's it's very clear, like she's still like got that Avenger side, to, Avengers side to her. But like, it, it was very clear to me throughout the entire show that like she's not supposed to be a full on protagonist. Yeah, she, is, she, is, she it, it's supposed to be like her going through like the all the grieving process and what she's doing in terms of that and how her powers affect everything and everyone around her as well and how she has to like own up to these actions that she's causing for all these people i think that um definitely the costume is a good representation of both both kind of both sides to her both as uh an avenger and also as like you know someone who yeah she she definitely has flaws in her um her powers and magnify and magnify those cl- those flaws a lot Mm-hmm. Um, something that I know early on that Elizabeth Olsen, the actress, complained about was the Scarlet Witch's costume being too, I guess, racy. <laughs> I'll use that word. Um, and I think they found a good way to make it not so, but also a good kind of like um, tribute to the original costume, which the original costume would seem, would seem very impractical now. You know, it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah, I think so they many- did a good job with the costume. Yeah, there's so many like old like, like you know like like the classic comic book costumes where it's just, you go back and like and you look at them and you're like, who thought of like comics aren't supposed to to be like realistic? You're not really supposed to like see them at, like in like the real world, but like trying to draw real people, you know? Like and it's like who who thought this would be anything like remotely practical whatsoever? Right. right. Yeah. Um. And then um, the end credits. It was also kind of interesting. Oh no. Oh, I. I was okay. Keep about going. I just wanted to. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. In the finale, there were other things we talked about. I was like, I was mentioning last episode. Of, there are all these like plot lines that need to be wrapped up. There's like Darcy who's out there. There's 
Jimmy Wu, who's like out there. There's uh, Monica Rambo, who's out there. And we were like, oh, this episode's going to have to be like two hours long or something to resolve all of their plots well. And, you know, it wasn't two hours long. And it, it, it really struck me as kind of funny how quickly it like wrapped most of like the plots up for like, like for like for Darcy's whole plot. It's like, you know, she's driving through Westview with the intent of, of like reaching uh, like, or, or like regrouping with vision to talk things over or whatever. And she's in there for like a minute as she rams the van. We last saw her driving in episode seven, like into Hayward's armored car thing. Mm-hmm. And then that's just like the end of her plot. Like that's how they wrapped up her entire story. Like she's gone yeah. after that. And like Timmy Wu has like a short bit, but then his gets like wrapped up. We never even find out about like the missing person or anything like that. Uh, for like for Monica Rambo, she just like escapes and then uh, comes and like kind of helps out, and that's like it. Like they, are, like I do like what they did with 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 a, a lot of the plots, but for most of it, it's just it was it was very quick. Well, Monica, yeah, I need to left on. A... I need I need to plug in my laptop before it dies. Uh, I'll, I I will be back momentarily. Okay. Yeah, but you, well, you, guys can, you guys can you guys can keep talking about stuff. I won't like stop the podcast for for that. You make well, it Monica, uh, for any uh, listeners out there here, especially for for me, you just like stop listening to it now, or like just like leave your phone for the next like thirty seconds or so. I will be right back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve, what were you gonna say? I was just saying because like I definitely agree with him because like uh, for the most part. Um, Especially about Darcy, I was really surprised that like she had one little one line in the entire finale and stuff, and it was really focused mostly on Monica. Uh, well, it was focused on Monica, but like the main focus was on Wanda and Vision and stuff, which makes sense, obviously. But it's just like they pre- I felt like they really only focused on them, and it was really satisfying everything for both of their storylines. But mm-hmm. I do think that was like one of the things that. I would have liked to see a bit more was like those side character resolutions. Like Hayward is like, sure. He just, he's like an actual villain or like uh, just like a bad dude who could, who gets sent to jail about it because, it, um, because he like tries to shoot the kids or something. That was kind of a weird. Yeah, moment that was, too. I'm not, yeah, I not even like that. I, that just, that seemed really out of place just about that. Um, but he, like Hayward was just there. He's like, I'm gonna make it very clear that I am the bad guy here. Yeah, <laughs> I have no just, redeeming I'm, qualities. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, I can kind of see because I could kind of see where he was go, where he was coming from, especially um, in the episode before where like Wanda's talking with him at the um, at the facility and everything. I'm just like, yeah, I I kind of get like he's just trying to like stop the people with superpowers because like they do harm to the regular citizens and everything like that like it's just it's kind of like the incredibles plot lines and stuff but um it's but then they just it just came it kind of came out of nowhere where he just tries to shoot those kids i'm just like what <laughs> yeah and then he keeps he was shooting like, when no monica's clearly in the way allow you. yeah yeah he's like i'm no longer gonna allow you to relate <laughs> to me at all you cannot relate to me i you can no longer hold my views i'm going to shoot children <laughs> Yeah, he, he was like, I, I'm just onto that. Like, he unloaded the entire clip. I'm just like, blocking, he's standing there blocking everything, and you're just going to keep doing this. <laughs> For what? Uh, but no, I liked, I definitely liked Monica's sort of storyline, too, and how it, how they ended it with um, her coming, going back with the with, uh, people with, from her mom and everything. Um, with that at the uh, mid credit scene. Yeah. <laughs> Excited where that's going for. Uh, and you get that next uh, Captain Marvel movie. Or mm-hmm. Secret Wars. Which a lot of people were saying it could set up Secret Wars, which is also coming. It's That that at least has been confirmed. Yeah. Um, mm. That has a lot to do with the Skrulls and Nick Fury. So, Which um, I honestly kind of wish they up. kept it more a secret. Like, I feel like the whole, like, like the cool thing <laughs> that, like, the secret invasion plot line is like, oh, you don't know who's a Skrull. You don't know who isn't a Skrull. Like, it's like, you know, it just kind of gets revealed. And all of a sudden you're like, wait. Like anyone could be a scroll, and I kind of feel like now it's going to be like, okay, we have the expectation that like the 
characters are going to be scrolls, especially you know, like, like like the Spider-Man thing teased that some, but I really feel like they're just going hard with it now, like integrating the skull, the scrolls into more MCU properties. Like when when we roll around to the series, we won't be surprised when like anyone turns out to be one because it's like okay, you guys have been shoving these down our throats for like you know all these like cameos and stuff for a while now. Right. Um. You, uh. The 2010 Marvel. Uh, the who was it? Avengers. Earth. I think it was Avengers. Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Maybe. Cartoon. They did a really good job of the Secret Invasion. They just would have like they would allude to it every so often. So just like throwing scrolls and everything. They just like would allude to oh Captain America. Spoiler alert, I guess. Captain America is a scroll. And it's like, whoa, and then you forget about it, and then they bring it back. It's like, whoa, I forgot about that. Um, I think they did a good job with that. Um, I am so excited for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series finale, where it just turns out that they're both scrolls. <laughs> just, just the entire time. We heard that from our inside source, Mark Hamill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The scrolls will turn back into Mark Hamill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but... That's actually the end of Secret yeah. Invasion. How they find out everyone's a scroll is they just like they just build this machine that like makes scrolls look like Mark Hamill instead. Um, and then like half the population do. turns into Mark Hamill. It's, it's like someone like snaps their fingers and half the population turns into Mark Hamill. They take the they take the mask off like a Scooby Doo. Mark Hamill. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so that was. Uh, the do you first... want to talk about that? Do, or do you want to talk? We'll talk about the last. Um, and we'll talk about the end credit scene. Then we'll talk. About, yeah, post credit scene. Then we'll talk about Falcon Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's see. Um, so the post credit scene. If uh, we forgot to mention spoiler alert off the top, but I guess if you're this far into it, you know. No, um, we actually haven't spoiled anything yet. This is this is this <laughs> always like the background knowledge to watch the series finale. <laughs> um. So, uh, basically, we see, uh, Wanda. In the middle of nowhere, I, I couldn't tell you where she was. And in actually, a cabin, there's a comic book mountain, or sorry, there's a mountain in the comic books that, like, a lot of people are saying, like, that's where she's at. I, like, I, I have seen seen that. There's like a mountain that's like tied to like the mutants, or, or to her. Mm. They were like, she's at that. Mountain. I'm like, how can you tell? It's like, a, it's like a mountain. They all look the same. <laughs> it's a mountain. <laughs> Uh, but it, these are the same people but, who were expecting Mephisto, though. So yeah, yeah. you really but take it, that at face value. It could be the mountain. So ah, uh, yes, the mountain, space mountain, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but uh, so she's in a cabin in the mountains, and she's just she's chilling. Then she then she hears the pot of tea go off. She gets up, she walks in, and then you go past her, and she's in the back. She's astral projecting, kind of like the, Doctor Strange did, in the. Yeah. In his movie, I was just saying, in the first Doctor Strange movie, which we haven't seen the second one yet, but in his movie, and but she's doing things in like him where he had to be sleeping, and she's reading the Darkhold. All of a sudden, she, you hear her kids screaming, and then she goes, "Uh oh!" And then the, the scene ends. But uh, also, that's our so, setup for Doctor Strange. So, which Wanda do you believe was the astral? Proje- not uh, sorry, Astral. Which one do you think was the projection, and which one do you think was the a real one? Because I thought it was obvious, but apparently I've seen a lot of articles claiming the opposite of, of like what I thought. David, what? Oh, I said Steve. I was going to see if Steve wanted to answer it first. Uh, I mean, uh, I was, I was, as a uh, casual was, fan I was, myself, I would just be inclined to think that the astral was the second one reading the, the reading everything and hearing her kids like studying while she was studying or whatever but if you're saying something different here now like i don't know when like when like wally first responded to my question i was like you know who do you think is the projection Wally was like steven and i was like you think steven's the projection <laughs> <laughs> of course yeah that makes the most sense um so what i saw it as is like there's like the there's the actual Wanda who is reading the book. She's like filling up there and like for appearances, she's casting out this projection of like her doing like normal stuff for like whatever disguise. Well, she's actually reading the book. But I've seen a lot of articles claim that like 
the real Wanda was the one in like her sweatpants or whatever, like making the tea. And she That's was like projecting thought. herself reading that, which I don't, which I, I don't get how that makes sense, but a lot of people seem to like believe that way. So maybe there is something that I'm missing there, but Wally, well, what, what do you think? You, I, you be the tiebreaker here. Well, my question to you is why would she need to make, why would she need to project herself doing something normal? She's in the middle of nowhere. Because yeah. if it be, be because like, you know, she's, she, she, she just like put an entire town under her influence, you know, caused all this harm to like their like mental states or whatever. And then she just like left un like, like unchecked, you know, un like unaccounted for. If anyone's to find out she's trying to gain more power here, they would, they would stop her. So if they're spying on her and they see her, you know, doing whatever, then they'll know. But if they see her doing like ordinary things, they'll, be fine. Okay. But it's not the whole point of like her going off into the literal middle of nowhere, just a mountain in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> so that she couldn't be found. Yeah, but I so mean, Steven, like, it's but, like, female. Yeah, yeah. But like <laughs> with like with like the capabilities that everyone has in this like technological like I mean like like utopia, there's no way she she like isn't tracked. There's like there's no way that she actually is where she can't be found there have got to be people spying on her and if they can't see her doing these ordinary things like you know yeah. they're they're fine with like leaving her alone just as just as as long as she's not doing more bad things like reading the dark hold uh mm -hmm. so no, that's I, yeah. i'm I, so I was assuming that that like the that her reading was the real one, and she was just like making it look like she was doing ordinary things. But uh, I mean, I I don't know what the intent was, so I can't say for sure. So I guess the question would be: Can non wizards slash sorcerers slash witches see astral projections? Like I know to an extent they can. Like we saw that in the in the surgery the scene in the hospital when Doctor Strange was fighting that other astral projection, but she could only see part of that. So, and yeah, and, so and, like, and, and like, I did not mean to say like astral projection, like, well, like, I meant to say like, like with like an, an actual, like, 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 like an actual oh. projection, one that, uh, that, that, that other people can see, but isn't like her. I didn't think there'd be a bad I'm serious about this, honestly. Yeah, I'm, I'm so used to saying like astral projection because I normally talk about like shows like 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 uh Legion or whatever, where like half of it is like you know just him as as an astral projection in his own mind. Um, but yeah, in the case of like uh, Wanda, I want to, I figured it was, it, was an, it was an actual like uh projection she was giving off just to make it look like uh, she was just chilling. Interesting, because um, like I'm not sure if the actual her was the one in, in like sweatpants, you know, with like the tea or whatever. How could she see? Like, what would be the point of her making a projection of or like, y you know, of like her reading and studying or whatever? Why wouldn't she just like? I, I don't well, know. Like, fair. I don't want to say like definitively or like absolutely, but I mean, I could be completely wrong here, but I th but isn't it like? Something with her powers where she, that, like, that, that, like, Eve, or, like, more anti hero side of her that is, like, kind of ha has its, like, mind of its own. Um, just, like, based off of what I saw in this, in the series where, like, how she made the entire town, like, out of grief completely and, like, not entirely in her control and stuff, but, like, she still was able to project it all there too so I, I that's that's what i was figuring like when i saw that scene was just like it was just something that like she it's like that side of her wants to read and wants to get the knowledge from that book and everything from but um it's not necessarily something the more heroic or avengerish side of her can can tell can control i, I guess I actually just think I figured it out. Uh, you know how she had a like like a brother who was like her twin. Well, they actually had another twin, a triplet, <laughs> if you will. 
And uh, it was in identical twin or triplet, if you will, except for they weren't identical triplets. But uh, she's actually had, had like a double this entire time. Ah, uh, yes. And like they've just so, been hanging out, uh, chilling. The, there's or two of them of that look exactly scroll. alike. <laughs> One of them is a scroll, or they're both sc- scrolls. Problem solved. Two of them um, that look exactly alike, and then the then uh, <laughs> old boy over here is just. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, what? What? Wow! All right then. I think I, this might be the time to move to Winter Soldier then. Yeah, I was gonna say the Winter that. Soldier, that's, yeah, that wraps it up perfectly. For sure. <laughs> um. So Falcon and the Winter Soldier comes out this Friday. Mm-hmm. Um. Sorry, I'm move a little bit closer to the mic. Comes out this Friday. Um. What are your expectations for this? I mean, we've seen a couple clips. We've gotten the the trailers. It's gonna be very different from Wandavision. That's about that's about all I can tell you right now. Um, it's gonna be very different. Yeah. Um, yes. Different side of the MCU. The yeah. MCU you were used to. See, um, because you know we had Wandavision that like had one episode where it was a 50s sitcom. Now we're moving to Winter Soldier, where all episodes are of 50s sitcom. <laughs> um, so it, yeah, it'll be a it'll be a huge change there. Uh, but yeah, I That's my only speed. expectations. <laughs> <laughs> my only expectation is that uh, the is the Falcon flies around some. That's it. That's that's all I got. I'm not really expecting a whole lot here. I'm just kind of prepared for whatever ride they they uh, put me on. Sure. I'm excited for hopefully, because like obviously, one division was very different. That there weren't, it wasn't very typical Marvel, like with a with a whole lot of action scenes and fight scenes, and everything like that. So I'm definitely excited to, and while I enjoyed obviously the character side of one division a lot too, um, I am excited to see hopefully some more action scenes in this um, series. Yeah, uh, the 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 actors Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan, I believe his name is. Um, they've talked a lot about yeah. this show and saying it, it's like a uh, like more like a buddy cop movie. That's how they've described it. Um, which, is, which is cool. Uh, it's definitely going to be a lot more like like I said, the, a lot more like what we've seen already from every other uh, Marvel property, I guess, other than Doctor Strange. Infinity War and Endgame, because Infinity War and Endgame were just on a completely different level. Um, I'm excited, especially to see what they start to introduce. If they start to introduce the mutants here, like they claim to do in the WandaVision. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see what Baron, how Baron Zemo is a bad guy. And I can't wait for... Oh god, what's what's his name? The, the fake Captain America guy, whose name I can't remember. Oh, uh... Captain UK or or something like that, right? <laughs> There's a Captain Britain, but I highly oh, doubt. Oh wait! Oh oh no! You mean like, like the agent guy? What's his name? That's agent, right. Agent secret agent. Secret no, U.S. agent. That's his name. UK agent. <laughs> U.S. agent. <laughs> yes. But yeah, U.S. agent who takes a mantle. Wait, the, his comic book origins interesting, but uh. From I'm the commercial, excited. it seems like he takes the mantle of Captain America. Yeah, uh, I am excited for uh, Aaron Zemo as well. I know a lot of people didn't like him in Civil War. I, I very much liked his role in Civil War, so I'm excited to see him do more here, although I'm not sure how much he'll stick with his original kind of mission statement or whatever, because not a lot of people like that, apparently, but we will see. We will in like five days, right? Yeah, five days. Yeah, I will be getting up three a.m. because unlike you two, I am jobless. <laughs> um, don't worry. Yeah. don't worry. You just have to wait like what, like five or six more months, and then you'll be months, all yeah. set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly that. Um, <laughs> well, I'm excited. I don't know much about either of these characters as. The uh, casual, the resident casual fan, Marvel fan yeah. here. But um, I mean, I am somewhat, hopefully I'll learn um, a lot about them. 
<laughs> yeah. I, I, I am somewhat of a casual fan as well when it comes to some elements of the comic books. I mean, in the same way that a lot of my in-depth like uh, Pokemon knowledge has come from Pokemon Go over the past couple of years, uh, my Marvel knowledge has also come from Pokemon Go <laughs> in the last few years. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm excited to, to, to see more of these characters as well. Um, I have in the last year because ever since the the Hamdemic has come around, um, I've I, I watched all the movies and I that didn't that didn't uh, quench my bill for Marvel, so I started reading the comic books. Um, I again I also haven't read much about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, all I know is that they that at some point they have comic books together. It's about the extent of knowledge I have of them on the in the comic books. Because um, really, all I've read is Daredevil and uh, yeah. Black Widow so far. So I know just as much as you guys do. But I'm excited for it. I'm excited yes. to learn more about these characters and go deeper. Because if this had been a movie, it would not... I don't think it'd be as good, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... We will see. I like. I do like the new focus on these smaller... Oh, quote unquote, smaller uh, characters here. Uh, shows are think, a nice way of like introducing all of them in, in yeah. more in depth. Yeah, I think like if they had made these last two, like Wandavision and these, this into a movie. Well, first of all, Wandavision just wouldn't make any sense as a movie. I just oh. like by the structure of it. Um, but also like these are lesser known characters. The the non Iron Man Hulk. Captain America kind of characters of the MCU, but they're still Avengers and everything. So, like, people know who they are, but they don't really know anything about them. And it's just like me. Like, I learned, to, like, Vision is now, like, definitely one of my favorite characters in the MCU after WandaVision. I, I think I, I loved him in every one of those episodes there. Okay. I, th- I thought he had really good character development and everything, too. Um, so, I think it's definitely good that they're being released as TV shows to, like, get them more like in-depth in, um, introduction, like ex- explanation on who these people are. I wonder what's going to happen with like, White Vision, because like he just disappeared. Like, kind of like what we were saying with the other side characters, we got no closure on his character. He just di- he just up and disappeared after getting his memory back. Um, so we'll, so I'm interested to see if he'll reappear in Doctor Strange or if he'll reappear anywhere. Yeah, it's kind of odd because he doesn't have anything tying him to a particular franchise, right? We're like we're right now, so we just need to see where he he resurfaces because you know he will. Um, yeah, they alluded to that there at the end. Yeah, uh, episode nine. But so yeah, I think that's about all I had for this episode. We've been going for about an hour and a half. Well, <laughs> with that time in between. Mm-hmm. I don't know. How long uh, actually- no idea how how long this will be, but I've I've I have actually just gotten word from uh, Mark Hamill himself that uh, uh, of of where White Vision will make his next appearance here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's actually on the very next episode of this podcast. That's right. Next episode, we're gonna have White Vision <laughs> as a guest on this podcast. That's weird. Uh, I thought I heard him. He was making a special appearance in Pokemon Go. It's part of a new event. <laughs> oh, yeah. That from from what they have each week, he's gonna yeah, be the right. Jedi that, that Ray Skywalker trains, actually. So, or even better, he's appearing in Fortnite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yep. All of these things. It's White Vision will be everywhere in the coming weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. On yeah. our show on Paramount Plus, as we said last week, that our show is on Paramount Plus. Um, yeah. We will be. And everything. Paramount mm-hmm. Plus. Yep. Which Brandon is fi- finally canceled two weeks ago. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like I, I canceled it right before it, like it it became Paramount Plus. So. That's right. Nice. <laughs> How long did you have that? Like three months. Uh, uh, yeah, I had it for three months. Like the first month was the free trial, and the second month was the month I, that I forgot to cancel. And then, I, then the second month is when I remembered to cancel, but I was a, I was a day off of where I needed to cancel. <laughs> uh, so, yep, spent twenty dollars on 
my free trial, but I got some value out of it. So maybe it wasn't all that's bad. All that matters, right? That's all that matters. Yeah. But, anyway, uh, this does yeah. seem like a good place to wrap things up. So uh, remember to subscribe to Wally over at uh, uh, what's like Wolf what's it, like, Entertainment. Alligator Coyote. Uh, Wolf Gator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> coyote. <laughs> Alligator Coyote. Crocodile. Uh, coyote Crocodile. Yes. Uh, it's a Wolf Gator Entertainment. Don't forget to uh, follow us on Instagram. I forgot to post something last time. Uh, yeah, disgusting. Oh, well. I didn't realize the last episode was like out. I had done this as well. I was like, I was like hey, when is the episode airing? And then you were like, oh, it's been out for like a week. And I was like, oops. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, so right. we'll get some more regular updates out there. Uh, and uh, don't so forget yeah. to, follow, to subscribe to Brennan either. Yes. Uh, uh, that not Brennan on mm -hmm. YouTube. Yep. And, uh, Steven, do you have anything you want to plug? Yeah, is, is, do you want is these it, people to leave you the hell alone? <laughs> yeah. um, well, it's tempting. No, but um, I, I've got some stuff in the works. I might, uh, I've got my uh, whole setup and stuff. I might start streaming sometime in the, in the future. Um, so I'll be at twitch.tv slash itxluca if, yeah. if anyone wants to check that out now. I have some test streams uploaded, but... Um, Maybe, maybe in the next month or so. We'll see nice. what's going on. But yeah, well, thank you guys uh, for having you. me. Thank you for Absolutely. being on. Thank you for being on. Yeah. Ha, huh, Jinx. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. fun. Brendan, you're on the slightest delay, so that didn't happen the way you thought it did. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. Um, oh, anyway, uh, so uh, thank you guys for listening. And uh, yeah, hope you guys come back to the next one. So...